Jizya, is it collected with dignity? So here's some collected notes. The honor of Islam lies in insulting Kufr and Kafirs. One who respects the Kafirs dishonors the Muslims. The real purpose of levying jizya on them is to humiliate them to such an extent that they may not be able to dress well and to live in grandeur. They should constantly remain terrified and trembling. It is intended to hold them under contempt and to uphold the honor and the might of Islam. Sufi Saint Ahmad Sirhindi, this was written in the 1500s to 1600s and it's letter number 163. Dhimmi is derived from an Arabic root that means guilt or blame. Now they speak of safeguards that can be extended to protect the blameworthy. Yeah, like the mafia extends safeguards to protect the people in their territory as in you pay us money or you don't have protection. Interestingly, a hypocrite is considered to be a Muslim in name only. They are distinguished from true Muslims, according to Surah 9, by an unwillingness to wage or fund war. The Quran says that true believers fight and are ruthless to unbelievers. Yes, that is true. Ninth century Islamic scholar Tirmidhi declares, in normal conditions when Muslims are in power and they're not living as a minority and they are not under any compulsion or subjugation, it is an order for Muslims that they should not give leeway to non-Muslims and they should not greet them first nor yield the way for them. This is Jamia Tirmidhi and Volume 3, Chapter 19. For our reference, this is a copy of Jamia Tirmidhi. This is Volume 3, Chapter 19. I'm looking at page 366. It is called the Chapters on Military Expeditions. Interesting that the discussion on the Dimi and the Dimma contract is under a chapter on military matters. Comments. In normal conditions, when Muslims are in power and they are not living as minority and they are not under any compulsion or subjugation, it is in order for Muslims they should not give leeway to the non-Muslims. They should not greet them first nor yield the way. Some of the people of knowledge, the alim, that's their scholars, said that it only means that it is disliked because it would amount to honoring them, and the Muslims were only to humiliate them. The Muslims are only to humiliate them. For this reason, when one of them is met on the path, a Muslim is not to yield for him because doing so would amount to honoring them. In a country where Muslims are living as a minority, they're allowed to give such leeway to non-Muslim rulers for the greater interest of the Muslim community. And here we have Ibn Umar narrated that the Messenger of Allah, that would be Muhammad, said, Indeed, when a Jew gives salam to one of you, then he is only saying, Assalamu alaikum, death be upon you. So say, alaik, and upon you. In other words, return the curse. This is graded as sahih. So to continue, I'll finish in one or two pages, and then I'll continue again in one week. There should be three or four episodes to discuss this. Al-Ghazali advised on vanquished non-Muslim Dhimmi peoples, one must go on jihad, e.g. raids, at least once a year. One may use a catapult against them, the non-Muslims, when they are in a fortress, even if among them are women and children. One may set fire to them and or drown them. If a person of the al Kitab, the people of the book, i.e. Jews and Christians, is enslaved, his marriage is automatically revoked. One may cut down their trees, one must destroy their useless books. Jihadists may take as booty whatever they decide. They may steal as much food as they need. They are not permitted to display their wine or church bells. Their houses may not be higher than the Muslims, no matter how low those houses are. The dhimmi may not ride an elegant horse or mule. He may ride a donkey only if the saddle is made of wood. He may not walk on the good part of the road. Dhimmis must wear an identifying patch, even women, and dhimmis must hold their tongue. Al-Ghazali viewed non-Muslim dhimmis as a typical Islamic theologian of the era. However, this is derived directly from Sharia, directly from the consensus of the Muslim scholars, so this is standard practice. Each male Jew should wear a yellow badge on his headgear. I wonder where Hitler got that idea. Maybe the uh, Grand Mufti of Jerusalem, who became a Nazi SS general, had something to do with that? Each male Jew should wear a yellow badge on his headgear and a piece of lead hanging round the neck inscribed with the word dhimmi to signify they had to pay the poll tax. Jews also had to wear girdles around their waists. Abu Shuja further imposed two signs on Jewish women. They had to wear a black and a red shoe, 
and a small brass bell on her neck or shoe to announce the separation of Jewish from Gentile women. Gentiles would be Muslim women. He assigned cruel Muslim men to spy upon Jewish women to oppress them with curses, humiliation, and spite. The Gentile population mocked all the Jews. That would be the uh, Muslims. And the mob and their children beat up the Jews in Baghdad. The dhimmi is obliged not to mention Allah or his apostle. Jews, Christians, and Magians must pay the jizya. On offering up the jizya, the dhimmi must hang his head while the official takes hold of his beard and hits the dhimmi on the bone beneath his ear, the mandible. No such thing as paying it with warmth and kindness. No, no respect. You must be humiliated. I will finish this slide and uh, I will continue again in a week. Please leave your comments below. I hope this is helping you understand what it means to be a dhimmi in a caliphate and why Islam is by no means a religion of peace. Sell your children to pay the jizya. So from the book, The Origins of the Islamic State, right? These are the details here. Page 354, it says, you have to sell your children and wives in order to pay the poll tax. Its people came to terms stipulating that their lives, property, and their children be safe, and they agreed to pay the poll tax. They capitulated, agreeing to pay the poll tax or evacuate the place, or they would be thrown off their land. This is Islam. This is what happens when the Muslims have majority. This is the Sharia. Understand this. I hope this was interesting. So, as usual, please share this around. Let people know. Bring this up in discussion. There are lots of comments where false information is being spread. Now you start to have the facts. I will drop all the links to the various books down below so you can download them, read them for yourself. If you need anything, please comment and let me know. And of course, do support me. This takes hours of work and research. And like, share, subscribe, all of that YouTube stuff. Thank you. Have a nice day. Goodbye.